Uh, thanks, Jen. Uh, Coach, you know, one of the things you talk about constantly is the idea of development. Uh, one player who seems to have taken what he was doing well last year and continue it this year is Christian Reichel. Uh, he's, it seems like to be a guy, at least to my view, who doesn't take a shift off. He played whether the score was 0-0 or 6-2. What did you see from him tonight? Well, Christian is a guy um, that since day one, we know what to expect. He shows up at the rink every single day, and, and he's a real good pro. Uh, and there's a reason why he wears a letter on his jersey. It's because he brings that energy every single game, every shift. And you're right, Dave. Um, he doesn't take a shift off. He's, um, he's on the puck. He's shooting pucks. Um, scored a nice goal tonight just with the effort of backside pressure and then reattacking the net. Um, he's a guy that we trust. He, we know what he, he can bring. He can play center, he can play wing, can play on the power play, can play on the PK. And I'm glad because he, he was part of the Jets training camp and, and uh, I, I kept talking about him. And But, you know, when you don't see a player, you don't see a player. And then he was able to showcase himself at the Jets camp. So he's doing well. He's improving a lot. He keeps getting better, and he's only going to get better. The way he works and the way he approaches the game, he's um, he's a good leader for us, and I think he's going to be a good player for a long time. And he's giving himself a chance, not only to stay in the lineup, but eventually maybe to get uh, a look at, uh, maybe in a year, maybe in two years. I don't know when, but if he keeps working like this, you know, usually when you work that hard, um, you create your own luck. And when you put him with, what was the thinking for you when you put him with, I mean, obviously it sounds like CJC is that kind of player too, a hard worker, Skylar McKenzie, he works hard. So is that what you were thinking is really to create a line of similar minded individuals? Well, yes, uh, that's part of it. Um, still early in the season, we're looking to build chemistry. Sometimes that, uh, that happens early in the season, um, but we felt that those three guys uh, could lead the team um, because they've been here before. They know the systems. They know the culture. Um, so, but but the way they play too. Uh, CJ um, is, you know, has a an identity of being hard on the forecheck and playing a 200 foot game. Um, Skylar McKenzie has speed. Um, we could see in the past that he could score some goals. And and Reichs, at the end of the year last year, Christian. Uh, with uh, Gus and, and Vess, Vesselainen was, you know, our top three offensively. So um, we could see he could produce as well. So we, we think that those three can be a good line for us. Thank you. Welcome. We'll go next to Mike McIntyre. Go ahead, Mike. Hey, Pascal. Good to see you, sort of. Um, I just want to get your thoughts on how you I guess, judge a game like this in a season like this where, you know, you had no exhibition games. Uh, you've got a very young, inexperienced roster. You got guys on taxi squad. Is, is the, I guess, is the key maybe not to get too high or too low about anything that happens given the unique circumstances of a year like this? Yes, for sure. We, we can get too high or too low. Even after the first period, I thought we came out really strong, but we're going to coach more the individuals. We're, we're going to coach the team. Uh, with the systems and the routes and all those things, but we're going to be coaching uh, way more the individual individuals with one-on-one, uh, -on -one, not in person, but virtually. Right. Um, and, and like tonight, like the two goals are systems, um, D-zone coverage, but one guy missing an assignment. And then you got two goals where we have the puck and it's a turnover. One goal that goes the back backboard and back of burden and in the net and one PK goal. And, and again, the PK goal, it's a misassignment. So it's not so much the system. Um, there's always improvement everywhere, but uh, mainly we're going to coach the players individually way more than usual because it's, 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 it's what's going to happen when, when you have a young team. It's one guy making a mistake and everybody looks bad on the shift, but it's not really the, the other four players. It's just one guy that needs to understand what needs to be done at that moment. So. Um, no, not getting too high, not getting too low. That's certainly, we, we're going to stay positive the whole year. What we expect from them, Mike, is you working hard. Are you trying your best and are you improving every day? And, and uh, if we don't feel that they're working hard, then we have a, a real issue. But uh, it's, it's not the case so far. 
And and so just to follow up on that, Pascal, at the end of the day, I guess success or failure, I mean, in the AHL, it's not quite the same with wins or losses, maybe at the NHL level where it's the be all end all. You will, I guess, judge success or failure of individual players and uh, of the team as a whole much differently. Yes, for sure. Um, and, and sometimes it's hard for even the coaches. Like we have to remind ourselves it's about development and but we're, we're it's in our DNA. We want to win every single game. Um, but that's this year is different. We need to play our guys and, and usually the American League is different. We're, we're here to play our young guys and, and this year we're going to even play them more. And, and they're going to be put in positions that maybe they're not ready yet, but we want to build that experience in them. We want to give them mileage. We want to help them understand why there is a there is a failure and how we can help them get better eventually. So it's uh, it's all about putting them on the ice and, and uh, pushing them to get better and and, um, and 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 evaluating and then we go back on the board and again put them on the ice evaluate and it's going to be like this for well 34 games now perfect thanks pascal thank you, thank you. we'll go next to carter brooks go ahead carter hi coach the todd Grayovac and lynch line was really moving in the first period i saw lots of plays made off of turnovers takeaways how would you assess their game today? I thought if you look at the game overall, I think those uh, three, that line, Gray Ovac and Todd and, and even Lynch, that was um, our line that was producing more offense. And, and they had some good scoring chances. Two older guys, Gray Ovac is an older guy. He's a veteran. He knows the league. And uh, Todd has experience. Uh, he's an older player. And Bobby Lynch uh, played only four games for us last year, but he's, uh, you could tell his speed is, is quite evident. So I, I think that line was pretty good uh, tonight overall. And just adding a bit further to some of your combinations and pairs as well in the back end, what have you seen so far from Billy and Dylan working together as well as working separately from one another? Yeah, um, well, we, we've, we've been playing 7D the last two games. Um, so there's different combinations. It's a little bit harder for those guys to build some chemistry um, right now because we have 7D, but we want to put them on the ice. And when they're together, um, and that's something we want to see more and more, and we're going to try to achieve that during the season, I, I think they can complement each other quite well. Um, there's an understanding on how the other guy is moving on the ice, and, and that, that happened pretty quick in practices, and, and they've been with us not very long but still you can see there's there's some kind of, a, of chemistry and um, but they're two very good players I mean the, the, those two guys are the kind of player that whoever you put them with uh, usually they make the other like the other guy look uh, look good as well that's what good players do so I you know so far I know Villy would like to create more offense and it's gonna come um, but Sandberg um, on the other side has, has been playing really good defensively um, and, and he wants more offense for sure. But uh, I think those two, it's just to build that foundation of defending and then joining the rush. We want them to join the rush. They can do it. But one step at a time, we're, we're building their game. We're going to help, help them build their game.